Hey guys, welcome to the video on the macromolecules. If you could get out pages 7 through 10 in your notes, we're going to get started on carbohydrates. So at the top of carbohydrates, we're going to start with the function. The function of carbohydrates is to actually support energy storage in our body. So a lot of times carbohydrates get a really bad rap. They were told, don't eat too many carbs. But the truth is, is there's good carbs and there is bad carbs. We do need good carbs like your pastas and your breads and in fruits and vegetables even to help fuel our body. Okay. So in our body, carbohydrates do have a huge support in that sense. In plants, they're mostly structural supports. What makes up carbohydrates are just carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. But the thing is, is they are in a one to two to one ratio. So things like glucose, which is a simple, very simple carbohydrate, or what we call monosaccharide, is found in a six to 12 to six ratio, C6H12O6, one to two to one. We have, when we talk about carbohydrates, a couple different categories. So the first one is in the section of monomers. You're going to put in the box the words monosaccharides. Monosaccharides is how we refer to a carbohydrate in its simplest form. So glucose, fructose, and galactose are the simplest forms of monosaccharides that we use in our body. Fructose is found in like sugars in fruits and stuff like that but in another way. And then um, galactose and glucose, obviously we know we use glucose in our body and we also use a little bit of galactose, but we don't get into that. Dimers. So in the next section, in the dimer section, we have the disaccharides. The disaccharides are essentially just building from monosaccharides. So taking two monosaccharides, putting them together. So making something a little bit more complex. Sucrose, maltose, and lactose are all those things. Sucrose is found in fruits and vegetables. Lactose is found in our body. You can be lactose intolerant, which essentially means you are intolerant to the combination of glucose and galactose together. You just don't have the right enzyme to break it into glucose and galactose. If we were to draw diagrams, which I would like you to also put into your notes, it would look like this. A monomer or the monosaccharide is one single element or one single we'll call that molecule of glucose, and disaccharides would be a combination of two. So as you can see, glucose, glucose in this picture would be maltose. Just below that, you have what we call the polysaccharides, which is the polymers of carbohydrates, so the most complex sugar you can get. A lot of these we don't uh, actually have in our body, so starches and cellulose we don't produce as people, but we can eat them. So starch we can get from plants and we can actually break down starches in our body, but cellulose we can't. We actually have to eat animals that can break down cellulose in order to get the glucose from cellulose. So for example, a cow has uh, four stomachs to help break down cellulose. We eat meat, or most of us do, I should say, and we get that cellulose broken down into all those glucoses by eating that meat. So it looks a little something like that. So that would be a polysaccharide or what we would refer to as a complex sugar. When we do our lab in a few days here, you're also going to have to know how do we understand if something has a carbohydrate in it, specifically a simple sugar. One of the things we use is a Benedict's reagent. It's just a solution. And what happens is, is this solution goes from being some sort of blue color which means there's nothing going on, to one of these beautiful bright colors, meaning there is a simple sugar being broken down or is present in the solution you're testing. Iodine solution, if you don't mind putting in brackets here for me, starches, iodine actually tests for the presence of starch. So we go from a yellow black brownie color, sorry, to a blue black color if starch is present in um, any sort of substance we're testing. The next page talks about lipids. Again, lipids get a bad rap. We're told, oh, fats are bad or bad or bad. Again, in moderation, they're not. And in certain contexts, yes, they are in bad foods like junk food. But lipids in your oils and your meats and any sort of fruits and vegetables are actually quite good for you. And this is why. They actually are a huge part of our energy storage or creating of energy. Our cell membrane, the phospholipid, bilayer, the cell's membranes are made out of lipids. So we actually need it even to help support our life. Uh, they do cushioning in muscles. They're found in vitamins or help the formation of vitamins and even hormones need them. So again, they're made out of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. This time there is no specific ratio, however. Now, unlike carbohydrates, 
lipids do not have a dimer. There's no in-between step. We just have a monomer and a polymer, and they don't have special names. They just are known as the monomers of fatty acids and glycerols, and the polymers are known as triglycerides and the phospholipid bilayer. We are going to get into our notes, the difference between saturated and unsaturated in the polymers portion of lipids. You just need to know that they fall under the polymer. They're the more complex version of a fat. Okay. Also within your notes, beside the monomers, if you could add the picture of glycerol fat and the fatty acids. This is what the monomer of lipids look like. One glycerol to three fatty acids. If we wanted to look at the polymer of lipids, this is one example. There's the phospholipid bilayer with the uh, hydrophobic tail and the hydrophilic, or wait, hydrophobic head and hydrophilic tail. I can never remember the difference between the two. I always forget. But anyways, this is the phospholipid bilayer. It is also made out of glycerols, fatty acids, and phosphates. When we want to test for lipids being present in a solution or in any sort of thing we are eating, we use something called the brown paper bag test. It's actually pretty simple. You put a dot of whatever you're testing and dry it. If it dries opaque, like you can see this water one did, it means there is no fats present. But if it, if it dries translucent, it means that oils or fats have soaked through and changed the paper bag from being opaque to translucent. Proteins. Now we all know proteins are a big important part of our diet and these are all the functions they have. Now the cool thing is proteins, we just learned about muscles, our muscles are made out of proteins. You probably hear that all the time. But if you remember when we talked about myofilaments, we referred to as actin and myosin as chains of proteins. That's right. Our muscles are made directly out of proteins. And in order for a muscle contraction to occur, we need proteins. So when you work out your muscle and you tear it up a little bit, like you saw in that steroid video, when it rebuilds itself back up, the muscle is made out of protein. So it's really important you have a good balance of proteins in your diet. There are other uses for proteins, but that one is one, a direct connection from our last chapter. Now, unlike lipids and carbohydrates. Uh, proteins are made out of carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, nitrogens, and sometimes sulfurs. We're not going to get into a big, huge part of this, but you just need to know what they're made out of because when you move on from bio 20, if you come to bio 30, this becomes a huge part. So proteins too have three different sections. There's a monomer, a dimer, and a polymer. And again, they have special names. The monomer for proteins is known as an amino acid or AA for short. When you take amino acids and you start putting them together, you create things called dipeptides and polypeptides. Dipeptides are just two amino acids put together. Polypeptides are now taking those dipeptides and adding more and more and more amino acids. So here's an example, what you can draw in your notes. So here you have just the amino acid. Here you have an example of a dipeptide, two amino acids together. And down here, which I just accidentally covered with that, is an example of a chain of proteins or a chain of polypeptides. Now, leave some space because in the polypeptide section, we also are going to talk about how proteins are packaged. So you may remember from Science 10, there's something called the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus's job is to package proteins. So how it does that is it follows this sequence. It starts with a polypeptide chain, and it starts to twist that chain into a secondary formation. Sometimes they are left like this, and other times they're turned into the tertiary form, okay? Lastly, they're packaged into the quaternary form. Now, you don't need to know these 100%. They're not specifically important to know, but you do need to know that polypeptides aren't all the same. They're packaged different to do different jobs, and we will talk about that in the notes ahead of this pages 7 through 10. When we want to test for proteins, we use something called the Biorette reagent. It's a blue substance, like a blue liquid that gets added to the substance. And if we have a positive change, it turns to a pink violet. So that's our chemical test. The last thing we're going to talk about is nucleic acids. So nucleic acids are cool. They pretty much make us. We are made of DNA, and that is what a nucleic acid is. It's made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. All right. So again, there's really only two steps to this. We have the monomer known as nucleotides. This is an example of a nucleotide. Again, draw this in your notes. It's a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogen base. One 
of these is known as a nucleotide. When you take this nucleotide and put it all together, we get nucleic acids. So it's a bunch of nucleotides put together, which looks like this. So what you can see here is here's my phosphate, my sugar, and my nitrogen base. And again, here it is again, put it all together and all of a sudden you have what we would call DNA. Now the neat thing about DNA is, is these nitrogen bases are known as adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, and they only combine together, A's and T's and C's and G's. And really, that's what makes up our DNA. And so that's an example of a twisted form of DNA. In our labs, we don't test for nucleic acids, so there is no chemical test that you need to be aware of. So again, pages 7 through 10 will be your quiz. 100% just those pages, exactly like that with everything written. So make sure you get everything in your notes. Go back, watch this video again, and make sure you have everything in you need. And we will talk about what you're going to do to write that quiz on Friday.